Okay, probably uh, finishing up the uh, <laughs> overwhelming list of threats to access control today. Um, and uh, an old one, uh, an old one but a good one, uh, dumpster diving. Now, uh, of course, people tend to think of dumpster diving uh, pretty much in, in terms of the old days of uh, going into uh, the, the dumpster uh, and getting documents, paper, uh, physical uh, storage of information, and uh, getting manuals, getting uh, source code that's been thrown away, getting uh, lists of passwords that have been written down on, on things. Um, uh, and, and of course, these days that's less likely to occur. Um, there's uh, more use of, of shredding and, and recycling and that sort of thing. Um, in which regard, it's kind of interesting. I uh, remember a story. Um, a uh, particular company uh, had a contract for uh, picking up paper for recycling and the information security people... Uh, talked to the physical security people and said, where, uh, d where does that paper go? Uh, what happens to it when it gets picked up? It, it wasn't shredded on site in those days, um, which is happening more frequently. And the uh, uh, physical security guys, who after all had the cars, um, said, well, you know, we don't know. And they sat there waiting for the, the truck the next time it came. Uh, it came, picked up the paper, they followed it when it left, it went down uh, to the docks. And the paper got loaded onto a ship bound for Korea. Uh, and at no time had any actual shredding taken place up to that point. Um, now, you know, it's, it's entirely possible, it's indeed even likely, that that uh, paper uh, got turned into Excelsior when it got to Korea, got used to pack little dolls, which then got shipped back to the United States. Um, you know, it, this, is, this is the most likely uh, situation, but of course nobody knew. Uh, there, there was no uh, verification of what actually happened. To that, and so you know, on-site shredding became much more of an issue. And and these days, that's basically the way you do it. A company comes; they come with a a shredder on a truck. Uh, the paper uh, that you want recycled goes into the bin, gets turned into basically dust. Um, uh, these days, with the the types of shredders that they they put there, very very powerful, very high-speed machines. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so, um, but there, there is still a dumpster diving of a sort. Uh, you know, we've talked about it in terms of object reuse and data remnants and the, the fact that when we recycle our computer equipment, uh, which these days uh, pretty much always contains some kind of storage, uh, there are, you know, uh, uh, there's information that's going out the door in those machines, and we do not check where those machines are going. And, and now uh, studies are being done. You know, you can pick up hard drives in, in recycling centers. You can pick up uh, network, uh, networking devices, networking hardware, um, which contains... Uh, you know, all kinds of information about passwords, about uh, uh, accounts, about uh, customer lists, about um, network usage, about uh, mapping of the network, you know, all of these types of things. And, you know, this is a slightly different version of dumpster diving, but it's still dumpster diving in, in a way. Um, the good old back door and trap door. Uh, again, you know, this is um, something that we tend to see as, uh, you know, th this is not uh, something that happens anymore. This is something that is traditional, that used to happen. No, it still happens. It's, 
you know, we, we still put in uh, our, you know, quick access uh, uh, functions uh, into systems in development and not take them out when uh, we put the, the machines into production. And, yeah, it's, you know, that is, that is going to be found out eventually. Uh, people are banging on their systems all the time. Um, social engineering, of course. And, and we've talked about social engineering before, and we will talk about social engineering again. Social engineering is, um, you know, it, if, if you want to break into something, uh, you know, attacking people is the way to do it. And, and I mean, the, the ways... Uh, that people are using sh social engineering, the ways that people are attacking people, um, our employees, our customers, our uh, contractors, our, you know, whatever it may be. Um, attacks on people are uh, always depressingly effective. And then there's just straight theft. You know, people physically breaking into our our places and and uh, stealing uh things information um whatever it may be um the uh uh again this is why physical security does need to be a, a part of our uh overall information security and uh uh, again, um, intruders, uh, you know, people getting into our, our places of work, uh, again, you know, maybe they're, uh, maybe they're stealing, uh, maybe they're using our resources, maybe they're connecting to our systems, maybe, you know, all kinds of things, you know, and interesting, uh, and again, uh, we'll talk about crime prevention through environmental design and, and some of the well, the social engineering aspects of uh, physical security. When we get into physical security, um, but uh, one of the one of the things uh, to remember all the time: how do you treat your employees? How um, uh, how much do your employees feel a part of the organization? Do they have a sense of ownership? Because when people have a sense of ownership of the enterprise, they have a sense of territoriality. They're going to identify intruders, and they're going to ensure that intruders are not um, unchallenged, do not have unchallenged access, uh, that they uh, uh, will identify somebody who shouldn't be there. And, you know, you don't have to be mean about it. You can be very polite about, you know, can I help you? But uh, identifying somebody who shouldn't be there and why are they there?